This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy, and our guest, Chelsea Harder. We have a topic in June and July of sustainability, climate change, adaptation, and mitigation. And Chelsea is the sustainability dashboard coordinator. So I want to thank you for coming, Chelsea. And we want to hear about what it is that you're doing and uh, what are the results that you're um, gathering so far. Great. Well, thanks for having me, Maria. Um, I'm the Sustainability Dashboard for Coordinator for Hawaii Green Growth, and we are a public-private partnership that catalyzes action across government, private sector, and civil society. And we serve as the backbone organization for the Aloha Plus Challenge. So a set of cool. six integrated goals that reflect social, economic, and environmental priorities for the state. And we are tracking and reflecting those on the state dashboard. Excellent. So, so your six priorities include energy and of course. Yeah, yes, greenhouse mm -hmm. gases. And so maybe, um, I don't know if you can start off by saying a little bit about what those six areas are. Sure, um, sure. So um, th the key priorities, the social, economic, and environmental are really rolled up into energy, natural resource management, solid waste reduction, um, local food, smart sustainability, smart sustainable communities, and green workforce and education. Wow, <laughs> it's quite a mouthful. <laughs> that, covers, that covers a lot of ground. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, just the the social, economic, and clearly the environmental part is in a lot of the um, the titles, but it's all really integrated throughout. And really happy to be here to yeah. talk to get kind of nitty gritty in in um, how we're tracking key statewide priorities. Yeah. Excellent. And if we start off or focus on energy, that's that's great. Um, you know, but it's all integrated, as you mentioned, you know. Absolutely, yeah. right. And um, in, in terms of clean energy, we're, of course, we're tracking the 100% clean energy by 2045 and um, the mayor's commitment to the 100% um, clean transportation by 2045. We're also um, tracking the Paris Climate Agreement. Oh, wow. Right. So, yeah. um, so we'll, we'll dive in a bit of the, to those numbers in, in a bit. Okay. Yeah. So you've got a website that tracks all of these different metrics. What do you call them? Metrics? Areas? Right. So we have, um, we have the six goals, goals. and each of okay. them have corresponding targets. Okay. <laughs> Within those targets, we have indicators. So the indicators really m measure where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. So we, we can see, are we on track to achieving this 100% electric energy by 2045? Yeah. Or do, do we need to make some improvements? So it really highlights gaps and opportunities for further collaboration. And the beauty of this dashboard is that it's really a mechanism for accountability, transparency, and action. It can really yeah. highlight what are, what are important things in the state that we need to do to achieve our goals and just to create a better future for Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about prioritizing, you know, actions um, in in previous um, conversations, and um, you know, it's so important to measure your progress and to celebrate the progress, while you're also looking forward to the next challenge and working towards, you know, making even more progress. So I'm glad I'm glad someone's coordinating, you know, this information and the dashboard. I think is going to be an excellent tool for folks to rely on. Um, who's so what year did you do you start from? You know, when you're looking at, okay, this is 2018, it, does it go back a couple of years or does it start? So the Aloha Plus Challenge was launched in 2014 yeah. and um, the, the larger goals were launched at that time. And then for every year, two of the goals were developed. And by develop, I mean there's a robust multi-sector process that took a number of years to populate all the goals. And it really defines what are the key indicators and target areas that that show us where we need to go with these goals. Okay, excellent. And we we like to say we we measure what matters. We make sure that the right people are in the room and that we're that we're measuring the things that are really going to get us to our goals. Okay. So where are we? Ah, Let's so I, I would, yeah, I would love to um, bring up the first slide actually. Great. So as you can see here, we have, um, we have the Aloha Plus Challenge with our, our six goals on that wheel on the left-hand side. And this is really, um, 
this is really a localized model for um, sustainable development globally. So we've actually been recognized by the United Nations as um, a mechanism for localized implementation to achieve those 17 sustainable development goals that reflect um, what developing and developed countries need to do to achieve sustainability. So, um, so they're saying that because these are so broad and overarching, we really need um, localized implementation to anchor that. Yeah. Um, and if you want to go to the next slide, please. Great. So here's another way of looking at it. We have our we have our six goals on the left hand side, and with their corresponding target statements. So it kind of gives it gives you a snapshot of what do we mean by clean energy? What do we mean by local food? And on the right hand side, if you haven't already gone to the dashboard, you can see that that's um, that's how we've rolled up our goals. So those tiles there are the targets for each of the goals. If you want to go to the next slide, please. So just breaking out one of them, energy, if we're looking at, um, okay, let's look at the dashboard. We have our 100% clean energy by 2045. If you look at the first box on the left, we see that um, this is how we're tracking on that. So we're tracking this by the percent of renewable energy generated statewide. So we're at 27.7% as of 2017. Yeah. And we... Um, in addition to that, to bolster that, we have um, approximately 20% of energy efficiency that's helping to bring us closer to that goal. So as you can see by that little icon there, we are on track for that one. Oh, I see a little check mark. Yeah, so, and if, you, if you're on the dashboard right now, you can actually click on that tile, and below, some of those graphs will pop up and will show you trends. How, how we've been doing is, um, are we, are we going up, are we going down? Yeah. Um, and in addition to that, we have um, contextual narrative in there. So for people that aren't data wonks like me, they can go in there and, and understand, oh, this in is English. a- In <laughs> English. Right, this is a snapshot of what's happening and this is why it's important. Oh, okay, so I see those are, those are the graphs that you show on the Exactly, on the there. right, and yeah. then if you look at the far right uh, for our transportation goal, you can see it doesn't have the check mark, but it has um, needs improvement. So this is tracking the 100% clean transportation by 2045, and we're measuring that in million gallons of petroleum used per year for ground transportation. So if we assume a linear progression, we should be at about 400 million gallons. We're at 516.9. Um, mm. So this highlights the opportunity for us to work together to, to bring that down. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the trend on the transportation has kind of been up, hasn't it, recently? It, yeah. Slightly, yeah. I mean, it varies. It varies with um, with cost of oil. There was a the year that... Um, that cost of oil right. went up a lot, oh, and, yes. and that, <laughs> that actually pe the people's use went went way down. Yeah, so yeah. Um, the dashboard really highlights those trends with the contextual narrative, saying this is why it's going up, this is why it's going down, and this is what we're doing to yeah. achieve it. Yeah. So are you tracking, you know, on the vehicle side, you know, the fuel efficiency? Are you able to get that? That has always been a little tricky because so many people are using vehicles, purchasing vehicles, you know, retiring right. vehicles, so changing. One yeah. thing that we are tracking is uh, VMT, vehicle miles traveled. So yeah. that's um, 9,430 vehicle miles traveled annually. Yeah. And we have on the dashboard trends for that showing, um, is it going up right now? Is it going down right now? And that's um, with the U.S. Census Bureau. So there's going to be new data coming out very soon on that. Um, right. And then we're also tracking mode share. So, right, oh, so it's looking at... Are people driving alone to work? Are yeah. they carpooling? Are they taking a bike? Are they walking? And it shows right now 66.6% .6 of people drive alone, which contributes greatly to traffic. But we're also showing the new bike paths that are there and um, showing the amount of people that carpool too. So to really highlight for people, like this is, these are actions that you can take yourself yeah. to, affect, to affect these metrics. Yeah. So... Um that seems like a lot of information to be to be gathering. Do people help you? I mean, where where do you get your information from? Sure. So we have um, we, our Hawaii Green Growth is a hundred plus member public private partnership. So we have some really great partners at the state level, the county level, private sector, community level that all help us really roll up this data. Yeah. So um, we have authoritative data from state and county, and we're also yeah. looking to track community data through um, 
through a new prototype that we've developed. So starting with local food because it's very tangible. Oh, it's something there you that, go. Yeah, um, yeah. and a lot of people they look at the dashboard and they get really excited and they say, "What can I do?" And and so we've developed a mechanism for that. So um, so people can go on their phone, go on their computer, and they can they can say, "I harvested ten avocados or ten pounds of avocados from from my tree today," or these students at school in their school garden yep. have, you know, fed, fed how many students through, through local food. Cool. Yeah. And I guess as you develop these um, mechanisms for involving folks and having that, because it's exciting to see that you're not the only one doing it. You know, there's this sense of community and progress. Um, so as you develop some of these mechanisms, let's say around food, then maybe, you know, that might also translate into some of the other measures, you know, like even in the transportation one, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I mean, especially if we're looking at like the water energy food nexus, for example, yeah. if we're looking at um, water rates for agriculture, that's affected by electricity rates because you need electricity to pump the water to water the food and to produce yeah. local food for people. So it's really, um, it's really an interconnected system and yeah. we're always looking to, to, to show that through the dashboard. Yeah, I could see a lot of fun projects that would be integrated with the dashboard somehow, you know, community level or family level or, you know, group level, you know. Absolutely, and there's, um, there's actually a lot of schools that are interested in, they actually use the dashboard at this point to develop their curriculum around sustainability because it, it offers different layers of it. So yeah. if they say, what is sustainability? They can look at the dashboard at a very high level and say, okay, these six goals, we'll, we'll take it from here. Or they can get really nitty gritty and look at the data and analyze it and show connections and look at yeah. some of the layered maps. So yeah, it's really exciting and it's, it's really for everybody. Yeah, so on the energy side, there has been progress, and it's a, you know on track. Mm -hmm. um, are you working to enhance the progress in, in that area? I mean, or like energy efficiency side, or is it is it that the dashboard is measuring it, and we can see the progress, and you're publicizing the existence of this measure, um, and so the member organizations are the ones that are pushing. Um, right, pushing the policy changes or the um, technology piece. Yeah, and it's really a, a hub to serve to serve those groups. For instance, we have a sustainability business forum, which is another one of our portfolios, where we we have um, executives at the private sector that look to make commitments together and decide how for sustainability and decide how can we all move forward together. So we learned so many times this cross-sector collaboration or even collaboration within one sector yeah. can really take us a long way. So and this can be a place where people can reflect their, their successes or put out challenges or have information and resources where, where they can learn more about it. Yeah. Cool. So do you have any news, anything exciting coming up like, you know, I mean, other than our show, you know, get the word out, right? Get folks to go and look at it and see what they can do personally or what their organizations can do. Is there anything coming up that's, you know, going to be an opportunity to celebrate together or to work together to, to sure. improve something? We have, a, we have a few things. Well, actually, in the past, uh, last year we went, to, we were at the Verge conference and uh, um, I moderated a panel on data dashboards and innovation and we talked with state, county level, and private sector, and community level partners, so four of yeah. them, all were talking about the, the value of open data and how oh, we can yeah. really weave yeah. that into what we do. And um, that was that was really interesting to, to hear all the, the comments from the audience right, and just the right. excitement. Yeah. Um, and as well, we, we participated in a um, sustainable tourism session last week um, that Verge hosted and yeah. to really define sustainable tourism in a different way because that's right. definitely a, a multi-sector issue that we're really interested in in learning more about how we can really define key actions for for like hotels and um, you know taxis and uber and yeah. um, trolley system and um, and what we can offer visitors to really yeah. to show this sense of place in Hawaii so it's very it's a big issue it but seems like a natural convergence for Hawaii to be doing that absolutely yeah. and we should yeah. be a leader in that really yeah. I mean yeah. it's our it's our primary economic driver yeah. and um, everybody wants to come to yeah. Hawaii so <laughs> right. um, so happy happy about making progress on that yeah. and well we need to take a quick break 
But we'll be right back to hear more about the sustainable dashboard. Great, thanks. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Like this is the most important priority. Hey, we're back, and we're not done yet because we haven't even talked about some of the other aspects of um, what's on the sustainability dashboard, and we're going to end with a discussion of how important this all is. So um, let's uh, take a look. I think there was one more slide. Yes, if we can look at the fourth slide, please. Last one. Yeah. Yes. So we had talked about community engagement. So if you look at the left-hand side, so this is the app that you can use. This is, e this is either um, on your computer, on your mobile phone, and we've selected local food as a, as a prototype for people to be able to input their data onto the dashboard. So if you see there, there's a number of fields, and there's also a, a geolocation component. So communities can understand what is happening around them and they can also look at their neighboring communities and see what they're doing. So it's really a shared learning opportunity and it's kind of a, a friendly competition as well to see how community members can contribute to local food. Does, does it kind of track like, you know, the whole thing about the mangoes? <laughs> there was a discussion on, you know, during mango season, you might have a lot of mangoes and other people might want. Would it would that be something that somebody would you know do on here or is that a right? Different topic? No, that, no, that would be great. I mean, that's um, something we haven't gotten into the mango specifically yet. <laughs> but I mean, when yeah, when a mango when a season is really blossoming like the mangoes, um, it's helpful to know where where those things are happening. So if they have like a farm stand or something, so when when people enter in that app. They have an opportunity to make a comment if they say like, "Oh, choke mangoes" or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. People can and like come to my house and get some. Yeah. Um, so it's really a community tool that um, that can engage other people. We can also um, show that on you know social media to yeah. tweet it and things like farmers that. markets are those. Yes, there? so we're tracking the number of farmers markets across the state. So we have a we have an interactive map where. Wherever you go, and let's say we're going to the Big Island next weekend, um, you can open up this map on the dashboard and you can see where the local farmers markets are. It tells you when they are, what time, location. Um, so it's really a tool for, um, that, that would be another way to um, support like, local industry through tourism, yeah, for example. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. So what else can folks do directly? Ha. Huh. So, that's interesting, yeah, and that's something that we're really looking to build, and we're also yeah. looking for um, community input and what, what, what does the community want? How do they want to participate? For instance, um, I ride a bike to, every day to work, and I want to know how, how can we build that? So if it, would there be some sort of web application or place on the dashboard where I can enter, like, bike to work every day, and, and how many other people are biking to work. So understanding yeah. understanding that those communities and how they intersect. And maybe suggestions, like, hey, I wish I could get my bike here, or something like that, or... Yeah, and it's really a tool for those conversations. If more and more people are feeding are feeding into that, yeah. then it, it really it really highlights a, a point of action. Like, this is, this is something that we need to take for our communities, because right, there's this right. drumbeat. Yeah, I remember um, there was ride sharing, and, there, and I think there still is, um, you know, a lot of those ride sharing, you know, um, there were those buses, you could do a subscription bus or something, and so, you know, so some of those matching of the, 
you know, especially commuting trips, because if you're going every day to and from the same place, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are entities that support that, whether it's a business supporting that for its employees or an independent company that's offering those types of buses. Um, right. Yeah, we're really looking to, to be able to, to capture they, all of that. Can fo so folks can make suggestions like that. At, at this point, um, it's, it's something that we're looking to, to build out yeah. in there. So right now we have local food. And the reason why we're doing that is because it was really inspired by three yeah. schools that are doing this oh. zero waste schools project. So they're taking all their, um, their food scraps or the food waste from lunches. Mm -hmm. um, they have interns and students working with this group and they'll actually take it and make compost piles out of it. And through that yeah. compost, they will create vermicast, so this super rich soil that can help grow really nice local food. Yeah. And um, the sales to that goes back to the school and different programs. So it's really an example of circular economy, and that was the impetus to develop that, that app. So Excellent. always looking for always looking for more ways to do that. Yeah, I remember when I was um, in elementary school, we would um, put our food waste into the bin and it would go to the pigs. That's great. I yeah. It never saw the pigs. <laughs> I was like, yes, we're feeding the pigs. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so really looking to, to capture those stories for yeah. sure. Um, and in addition, um, one, another, another gap that we're looking at for, for the dashboard is really um, for solid waste reduction. Oh, yes. We're, we're doing well in, in, reducing, um, in reducing that, but we're also looking for more robust metrics for, for source reduction. So yeah. how are we not taking plastic bags and, and how are we um, refusing plastic straws, things like that? And then what is happening to our waste? Can we show the life cycle of that? Yeah. So really working with partners across the state to figure out what is, what is the visual story that we want to tell through the dashboard. Right, and right. I think the more and more people that are using it, the more and more robust we can make it. Yeah, so I guess it's a sense of community too. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I guess, um, there's a sense of urgency, I think, um, that we got from the previous um, topics we covered. You know, we talked about the sea level rise report. Mm -hmm. And if you have, you know, I guess the three feet of sea level rise is pretty much what Noah said, you know, that's going to happen. Um, but the question is, can, as we're reducing our, our impacts on the climate, you know, we're avoiding the, the higher levels of, of sea level rise. And so, you know, there's a bit of urgency, you know, it's a race against the elements and, and that type of thing. So um, how do you balance that sense of community and the joy that comes from working together towards a common goal and the, you know, the bad news story of, you know, this is, this is something that we're trying to avoid? Mm -hmm. So it's a, um, and the, the value of, of these communities with, with government, private sector, and civil society coming together is really exciting, but um, it's also, it's not, it's, you know, it's not all good news that yeah, we're working yeah. on. It's, it's really, um, we're all committed to having robust metrics and um, really key actions that are going to have an impact. So we definitely have rigor involved in, in these convenings that we do. And of course, the, the dashboard is used as a mechanism for, for policy action. So as the legislature open up, legislators can, can go into the dashboard and say, I need to make a decision on this bill. What is happening with, with this area? What's happening with education? They can go on the Green Workforce and Education dashboard, click into the tiles, and yeah. they can really learn, oh, this is the landscape of what's happening, and this can inform how I make my decision. Yeah. And the Aloha Plus Challenge is, it, it didn't come out of nowhere. It really, it's building on decades of sustainability initiatives. So inspired by Malama Hawaii, building on Hawaii 2000 and the Hawaii 2050 Sustainability Plan. So it's, it's it's the same people that are coming together and saying, this is what more we can do. And it has political coherence. We have, yeah. um, we have the signatories, our, the governor, the four county mayors, and Office of Hawaiian Affairs that have signed on and committed to these goals. So we're really, we're really all in this together. We know it's yeah. urgent, and we're tackling it. Yeah, so now I want to go check and see what, <laughs> what's in there, you know, and what might be missing, too. So if somebody says, hey, this is really important, um, and it needs to be put in there, who, who do they call? Who, do they send an email? Or, I mean, how, how, do you, how do you handle the suggestions or the feedback to the folks who either want to get involved or have a, a recommendation? 
Great question. We have uh, we have a number of networks where that can happen. Our um, of course our public private partnership um, with our partners will will flag different things and say yeah. we need to highlight this. We need to move on this. Um, and as well, we have social media accounts. We have um, Facebook and Twitter and yeah. Instagram where people can leave comments and learn more about kind of the drumbeat of what's happening. So we'll reflect yeah. key priorities like. June of last year, the, um, the state committed to the Paris Climate Agreement. So that's um, achieving net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. So that's what we're also tracking on the dashboard. Yeah. We're looking at the percent reduction of greenhouse gases. So on the original slide that you showed, mm -hmm. um, it had those two circles. And um, is that one of the elements in the right hand circle or maybe we can uh, take yeah, a let's, at let's that. bring that up Sorry. again. Can you bring up the first slide please? Great. Yes, so on, on the left hand side of course we have um, the, Aloha, the Aloha Plus Challenge and on the right hand side you see the, um, the Sustainable Development Goals, those 17 goals very similar to the Aloha Plus Challenge and by the way, um, Aloha Plus came out a year before those, so that <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how we definitely <laughs> had the same ideas there. Yeah. Um, but the reason why we bring up um, the the global component is that if we're like similarly to to our networks in Hawaii, if we're not all working together, we're not getting to the same place, and um, we have to do that globally as well. If we're in, we can't do this in a vacuum. If we're not connected, yeah. it's not being shown. So it's really yeah. we're really excited to be a, um, a mechanism for localized implementation for that. Yeah, I you know I had been thinking um, you know very often people say oh well Hawaii's small and our emissions you know don't make a huge amount of difference in the global, but it seems to me that um, to a certain extent what we do if we can publicize it, as you said. To the global community or to other localities who are looking for examples and we can share examples of success and things that maybe were less successful you know if we can learn from each other then you're multiplying the effectiveness of what it is we do so for every ton that we avoid emitting if we're ex com if we are communicating with everybody about how we did that then it has a multiplier effect and i don't i don't know how anybody would quantify that but it seems to me that that's actually an, an extremely important aspect of what we're doing. So I'm really glad that you guys are, you know, making those connections. And do you, so would the folks who are looking at the global question be um, looking at your dashboard or is they, there a formal They definitely are. Um, well, that? Hawaii, because we really serve as a microcosm for global challenges and we have our small finite island, we really have the opportunity to, to see these impacts quickly. Yeah. So sea level rise, we're going to see it in every island very fast. Yeah. And um, in addition, we, we have finite resources. So we are we are a model, definitely, that people can look at to to achieve these um, to achieve these goals and to look at how sustainability can really be done. We also sit on the bedrock of um, of traditional knowledge. We have this this wonderful cultural aspect that we can really bring to it, so that we can show other global leaders how they how to how they can scale and make place-based solutions for sustainability within their own communities. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a I think we have a good story to tell and we have a lot to learn and a lot to do. Um, and so I really appreciate the efforts you guys are making to pull together the information, to put it an accessible dashboard that's nice you know, it's very well organized and you can click on things and get more and more detail and, you know, as long as you can stand, you know, and you can contribute your ideas as, as well to this, to this effort. So. Right, and we'll just keep getting better, more interactive, and um, we'll get more people on the dashboard okay. and ready to take action. Thank you very much. Thank you.